Dr. Phil has made a career out of other people's tragedies, but the ups and downs of his own life prove that the celebrity psychologist isn't exempt from personal drama. Dr. Phil may now have a net worth of $460 million, but when he was 12 years old, he and his father briefly ended up homeless. In a 2020 interview on the Always Evolving with Coach Mike Bayer podcast, Dr. Phil revealed that his family was so poor that when his dad, Joseph J. McGraw Jr., landed a psychology internship in Kansas City, they didn't have the funds to move his mother and three sisters, saying, "...there was no money for anything, and when I say anything, I mean anything." In fact, McGraw and his dad ended up living in a car for an entire summer, before finally managing to rent a bare-bones one-bedroom apartment. McGraw remembered, "...we didn't have electricity, we didn't have heat, we didn't have anything. We moved in September. We didn't have utilities until January." I, I, I moved out when I was 16 because I was homeless when I was 15. Dr. Phil's father had a severe drinking problem. During a 2016 episode of his TV show featuring guests with alcoholic parents, McGraw opened up. I know when, when your dad is subject to being drunk, I, I know what that's like. McGraw shared, I know you don't bring your friends home. You don't bring your friends home because you don't know what you're going to find when you open the door. Because I didn't know if my dad was going to be drunk in the driveway naked in Denver in January." In another episode in which the family of Richie Lewis confronted the ex-baseball player about his drinking, Dr. Phil shared about a time he returned to the family home with several pals. "...my dad was asleep on the driveway in his underwear with his pillow, and it was 24 degrees out." It's no wonder that in 2014, McGraw shared that he hadn't had a drink in 45 years. Dr. Phil described his parents' relationship as chaotic. During his appearance on Always Evolving with Coach Mike Bayer, he described their dynamic as "...yelling, screaming, violence." As a result, a young Dr. Phil would take an unusual route into the family home after school, saying, "...when I would come home, I didn't come in the front door and go down the hall to my room. I went in the bedroom window. When I left to go to school in the morning, I went out the bedroom window." Because his family moved often during his childhood, young Dr. Phil found it difficult to make friends, and he couldn't rely on his sisters for company either. During his appearance on Always Evolving with Coach Mike Bayer, when he was asked whether he was close with his three sisters, McGraw replied, "...not at all. I was the only boy, I guess, and we were all four years apart, so that's a pretty big gap." The fact that his two older sisters, Dina and Donna, both got married at a young age meant that they drifted even further apart. But McGraw did form a bond with his youngest sister, Brenda, saying, "...I was pretty protective of her. I always said they had us kids in pairs, like the two older ones were kind of nutty. And then the two younger ones were pretty normal, so we were kind of separated into pairs." In the early 1990s, McGraw started running out of energy on a regular basis and was diagnosed with type 2 diabetes. In an interview with Future of Personal Health, he shared, "...I had to change my lifestyle significantly, and it started with building a treatment team centered on my doctor and including myself and my family, and changing both what and how I ate. I've been successfully managing my condition. It is not always easy, but it is always doable." I was kind of relieved because I was worried I, I thought maybe it was something that couldn't be managed." When asked about how diabetes impacts him on a daily basis, Dr. Phil answered, "...I sometimes find myself on camera for long periods of time, making it difficult to stay with small meals spread throughout the day. As a result, I stretch my intervals beyond the ideal." As a result of his diagnosis, he's helped launch several initiatives designed to both combat and raise awareness of the condition, including the online educational program On It. It's fair to say that the National Enquirer has never been Dr. Phil's biggest fan. The tabloid has printed all sorts of salacious stories about the clinical psychologist over the years. But in 2016, the star decided to fight back. And I'm not for everybody. Very no, you're not. Dr. Phil sued the Enquirer over allegations that he'd been both verbally and physically abusive to his wife, Robin McGraw. The offending article also alleged that the pair were on the verge of a divorce and that the TV personality had assaulted a man with a beer mug during his college years. In an official statement, the couple's attorney, Lynn Wood, said, "...Dr. and Mrs. McGraw, after enduring years of the National Enquirer, Star, and other American Media Inc. publications, knowingly and recklessly printing outrageous lies about them, their marriage, their integrity, and their character, have finally concluded that enough is enough and too much is too much." You have no idea how much I want to slap the out of you. Right? 
A spokesperson for the National Enquirer's publishers, American Media Inc., announced via BuzzFeed News, the lawsuit has been resolved to the mutual satisfaction of all the parties. Before following in his father's psychologist footsteps, Dr. Phil had ambitions of becoming a football player. While attending Shawnee Mission North High School in Kansas, he became the star linebacker and he went on to land a scholarship with the University of Tulsa, playing under former Brooklyn Dodger Glenn Dobbs. Unfortunately, Dr. Phil's hopes of making it to the NFL died when he suffered an injury that briefly left him blind in one eye. Determined to keep his dream alive, he researched optic nerves and wore a patch over his unaffected eye to help the vision in his damaged one. Speaking to Newsweek, older sister Dina McGraw said, "...being blind was just an inconvenience to him. That's kind of the way Phil looks at stuff. You can stand around and bellyache, or you can get it done and move on." Football's loss was television's gain, as the disappointment led him to a career in psychology.